Rustam Fareddinov was recently arrested by Russia's Federal Security Service, the FSB, and detained on charges of terrorism. Rustam is no terrorist. Even the FSB admits this. He is a man with no history of political or social activism, let alone extremism. He lives a quiet life in rural Bashkortostan with his wife and three young children. No, Rustam's crime is having a brother that the Kremlin wants to silence, Ruslan Gabasov. Ruslan is a leading member of the Bashkortostan independence movement. Currently living in exile, he was forced to leave Russia in late 2021. Now, Moscow wants him back, and they say they won't release his brother until he returns. I've been lucky enough to get to know Ruslan Gabasov over the last two years, and he's been instrumental in several of the videos I've made on this channel. I asked him to record a short interview with me because, especially at this moment, he has a very important story to tell. Our conversation took place on the 7th of December, exactly two weeks after Rustam's arrest. Thank you very much for, for joining us, Ruslan. Can you tell us what happened to your brother on the 23rd of November? The 23rd of November. It's been exactly two weeks since my brother was arrested. Early in the morning, they came into his home, 10 people at once. They were the FSB. They conducted a search, didn't seize anything, and told him to pack his things. They arrested my brother and took him away, saying that you'll be sitting in prison for your brother, so for me. He was taken to Ufa, the main headquarters of the FSB in the Republic of Bashkortostan, and he spent the whole day there. That evening, his wife got a text message from him, saying that he was being transferred for pre-trial detention and that they would only release him if I came back to Russia. If I don't come, he'll be imprisoned. The next day, they held the trial where it was decided he would be detained until the end of January. He's locked away in pre-trial detention right now, and he's been charged with a very serious crime that has to do with terrorism, the sentence for which is between 7 to 15 years. That's really shocking. Uh, does your brother have any history of terrorism? Is there any reason that he would be charged with this? No, my brother has never been involved with any political activity or any social activism. In general, he was always distant from the activism that I did. He's an ordinary family man, a father of three small children, with his oldest being 10 and his youngest daughter just a year old. He lives in the country. Usually he just worked, drove a mobile crane, worked as an auto mechanic, and that's it, nothing more. He never could have been involved with any sort of activism, much less terrorism, and he never was. So all of these allegations being brought against him are completely false. He's just being detained because of my activism in order to put pressure on me. So your brother is effectively being held hostage by the Russian government. Can you explain why do they want you to return to Russia so badly? Because I present a threat to Putin, to Russia. In my opinion, the greatest threat to Putin at the moment is the national republics and the different peoples in them. They can declare their independence and get that independence. And I am, well, maybe I wouldn't call myself that, but I'm considered one of the leaders of the Bakshian nationalist movement. I've been in this movement for a very long time, over 10 years. I was one of the founders of the Bashkot organization, which was then subsequently recognized as extremist by the government. All because we protected the rights and interests of the Bashkir people. We were protecting the Bashkir language, history, culture, and traditions. We defended federalism, and we defended the constitutional structure of the Republic of Bashkortostan. But Moscow didn't like any of this, and they constantly persecuted us. After they banned Bashkot, they started going after all of its active members, including myself as one of the founders and ideological leaders of the organization. And ultimately, because of all this persecution, I was forced to leave Russia. I got political asylum in Lithuania. And I kept at it with my political activism to protect the rights and interests of the Bashkir people. But after the start of the war in 2022, in the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we understood that if before we were for expanded federalism for the Republic of Bashkortostan to have rights as part of Russia, 
But now, we can no longer follow the same path as this government. So, we announced that we would fight for full independence for the Republic of Bashkortostan. The authorities don't like this. They perfectly understand that if this happens, Russia will cease to exist. It will cease to be an empire, and it will no longer be able to steal from our national republics, which they consider to be nothing more than colonies. And, of course, they started going after everyone who openly and loudly called for the complete disintegration of Russia and the independence of the national republics. And since they can't get to me, because I'm in Lithuania, and Lithuania protects me, and the European Union protects me, they've taken this terroristic route. They took my brother hostage, and through him, they are trying to get me to come back to Russia so they can arrest, imprison, and possibly even kill me. Через него, точнее, меня вернуть в Россию, чтобы там арестовать, посадить, ну и, возможно, убить. Many people watching this will not know Bashkortostan at all, or, or have even heard of it. Can, can you tell us about Bashkortostan? What is your home like? Well, the Republic of Bashkortostan is a very large national republic, and it's the home of the Bashkir people. It's located in the southern Urals, partly in Europe and partly in Asia. We, the Bashkirs, are the indigenous people. We've lived there for over a thousand years. We were formed here, and we've lived there for many, many years. We consider it to be our home. Our Republic of Bashkortostan is larger in size than such countries as Austria, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, and many other states. And we have a population of over 4 million. This is a very rich country, both in natural resources and economic capability. And there's lots of us Bashkirs living here. So we know well that if, in the future, we become an independent state, we'll be able to live on our own without needing to depend on anyone. Not Moscow, not other countries or governments. We'll be able to fully provide for ourselves. Moscow knows this just as well, as does their puppet Radi Kabirov. When Moscow, Putin, installed him as the head of the republic in 2018, one of the main tasks that he was given was to deal with the Bakshian nationalist movement, or more precisely, with us. This is why when Radi Kabirov came to power, the first order of business was to ban the Bashkort organization. Then they imprisoned one of the leaders of the Bashki nationalist movement, Adil Mukhamedov, for nine years. They imprisoned one of our activists in the Bashki nationalist movement, Ramila Saitova. They jailed her again. She's currently under investigation. Yesterday there was a trial, and they recommended a sentence of five years. Raidi Kabirov is also persecuting Vail Alisanov. He's one of the real powerful leaders of the nationalist movement, who still lives in Russia. And accordingly, he's going after me as one of the leaders of this nationalist movement. But since he can't get to me, I say this again, he goes after my brother. And through him, by arresting him, tries to get me to go back there. Raidi Kabirov is a puppet, a person who advances only Putin's interests. And in order to stay in power, he will persecute every nationalist movement that there is. If anyone watching this video wanted to help, uh, help for your brother or help his cause in any way, what, what actions would you recommend that they take? I I believe that today, the only way to help my brother is large, widespread publicity. Publicity of this crime, this terrorist act that has been committed by the government of Putin and Kabirov, by the FSB and by the other security agencies. Only broad publicity will help draw attention and perhaps put pressure on Putin and his government to free my brother, who is guilty of nothing that he's accused of. So I believe it's necessary to talk about what happened to my brother as much as possible.
This has to be brought to all the heads of state of the civilized world, to their governments, to their parliaments. And it would be good, of course, if this could be brought to the attention of the British Parliament and the House of Lords, so that they could see this and understand what Putin's policy nowadays is, what they are and who they are. I don't know if this will help, maybe it won't help, but there's a chance and it has to be taken. If Great Britain could somehow get involved in the defense of my brother to help in any way to publicize all this, I think it would give a good push towards my brother being released. One final question, Ruslan. Um, can you tell us how uh, your brother's family and, and your mother, how uh, they're doing in Bashkortostan? My family at the moment is, of course, in a very difficult situation. My parents, my mother and my father, you could say they've lost both their sons. We don't have any other brothers or sisters, so we're two brothers, one of whom is now in exile. I'm outside of my home and I can't see my parents. I can't hug my mother. I can't do anything. And now they've lost their second son, who's being imprisoned because of me. And he might be facing a sentence of 7 to 15 years, and it's possible they won't see him for many years. My brother Rostam's family has now also been left without their breadwinner. His children have been left without a father. Three small children who keep asking where their father is. It'll be New Year's soon, and they're asking, will their father come visit? How will they celebrate the New Year without him? It's all very sad to hear. His wife is constantly crying. My mother, our mother, is also constantly crying. No one knows what to do, and there's no light at the end of the tunnel, unfortunately. We perfectly understand that the current system under Putin is very cruel, and it's very unlikely they'll let my brother out even into house arrest. He'll stay in prison. I know he's in solitary confinement right now, and they don't let anyone visit him. Not relatives, not anyone other than his lawyer is allowed to see him, so it's very difficult. It's difficult to watch how my brother is suffering right now how his family is suffering, how his parents are suffering. Radi Kabirov has his own family now, but he's also had a different first family who's currently living abroad. And they're living very well. And I think that if Radi Kabirov's family were to suffer in the same way, and if they were in the same position that my family was in, I think he would think twice before doing what he's doing to us now persecuting people, putting them in prison simply for a belief, and in general, imprisoning people who are innocent and taking people hostage. Radi Kabirov will be happily celebrating his new year with his new family, while his old family lives in Europe, and he knows nothing of the pain that he's inflicting on me right now. So I hope that prudence and justice will prevail and that my brother will be released. Um, thank you so much for, for talking to me today, Ruslan. Um, I can't imagine what you're going through. It must be very difficult, but I know I speak for most people watching this video. We really wish the best for you and for your family. And especially, we hope that your brother Rustam is freed soon. Thank you very much, Fredo. Thank you for this interview. I am very grateful and appreciative of all who are interested in my brother's plight. I hope that everything will work out for us and that we'll be able to convey this message about what's going on in Russia and in the Republic of Bashkortostan to the masses. Thank you very much. I wanted to thank Jacob Repkin, known on YouTube as Arkin the American, for translating Ruslan's words into English, and to Michael Hilliard of the Redline podcast for reading them. Both of you did a fantastic job on very short notice. Thank you very much. Ruslan believes that publicity is the best way to pressure the authorities to release his brother, and we need your help. Please contact your member of parliament or your congressperson and tell them about Rustam. Tell them his story. 
You can share this video if you like, but also I've put links in the description to the handful of articles about Rustam's arrest that have appeared so far in Russian and English. I'll also leave links which should help you find the contact details of your elected representatives. If you're a journalist and you'd like to speak to Ruslan, please contact me using any of my social media profiles or by using the email address which can be found on my channel's About page. The same goes for fellow creators. Please tell this story. Some of you are already doing this. If I can help in any way, just get in touch. These may seem like small steps, but remember, the Kremlin is desperate to silence Ruslan Gabasov. Every scrap of publicity that this story generates will help convince them that arresting Rustam was a mistake. Please help.